Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Bearded Mystic Podcast and we are doing this series direct and unfiltered with the Bearded Mystic. If you're interested in submitting a question, there is a survey monkey link which you can fill in. It's a form and just fill that in and submit your question. Today we've had a question and it's Rahul, can you please go into your views about Hindu phobia in the West and in India? Now, as you know, this podcast is a spiritual podcast. We don't deal with geopolitical views or we don't really entertain such things. And I'm not going to deny that there isn't these things happening, that there isn't Hindu phobia. I am aware of issues that happen with Hindus in Pakistan or even in India. And I know that there are certain things that have been happening in America and also in the UK that happen in Leicester. So I'm aware of these incidents, but the podcast is strictly about spiritual understanding. And this is because when we start identifying ourselves with any label, we can slowly get stuck into sectarianism, factionalism, and we start discriminating against others. And it's interesting because when you start discriminating and in a negative way, then you lose sight of the real message. Now for me, what Dharma means and what Sanatana Dharma means is the teachings of the Upanishads. And if you look at it, everything has emanated from the Upanishads, from Vedanta, yeah? So when you look at that, the Bhagavad Gita has come from that, and so has the Brahma Sutras, and so many other texts. And, you know, there's traditions outside of that as well, whether that's Tantra, whether, whether that's Kashmir Shaivism. I really feel that that's what we should be exploring. Now, there are enough voices that are talking about these issues. Now, let me now talk about it very directly. I'm against anything that is hating against another group of people. It doesn't have to, they don't have to be my own. One of the things that we learn and what I've been learning from my childhood is that there is universal familyhood. We are all one family. And therefore, yes, we may have philosophical differences. I may not agree with, uh, with a lot of things from other traditions and within my own tradition too. But that doesn't mean I need to hate. One of the teachings that I've learned growing up is to have unconditional love. Uh, recently, my Sadhguru also spoke about this. And so if there's unconditional love, does that have any limit? Does that have any boundary? Does that have any, does that stop anywhere? No, it doesn't. And in fact, if you know the truth experientially, you know that you cannot go outside of this one. So even if someone believes in Allah, God, or any other form or no form or even in no God, that doesn't mean I have to hate them. I can have philosophical differences, but those differences don't have to turn into hate. It can actually be a respectful disagreement. And whenever we hate anybody, we are not moving forward. And I also believe that if you're Dharmic and you follow Hinduism, follow the path that has been put forward to you. We are a group of people that choose to respond to things. We are not reactionary. And therefore, what I see today on these Twitter spaces or on online, on TikTok, what I see is people just reacting to negativity. When you react to negativity, what happens to your mindset? What happens to your frame of thinking? It becomes negative, naturally. And even though you want to avoid it, you simply can't avoid it. Because that's what has infiltrated into your mind. And it's interesting. Whenever someone speaks something of the teachings or of high knowledge, hardly anybody shares that. I've written poetry. I have um, shared my views on, on TikTok. Nobody's duetted them. Nobody's done a reaction video to them. Those are positive messages of Dharma. Those haven't been emphasized. But if you look at 
what people do do it and kind of perpetuate is negative things people who say that yoga is demonic or people who say that murti puja is wrong or we believe in false gods all those type of things right they get more attention of hindus and that for me is a scary thing that for me shows where our mindset is and this is not just hindus that i'm uh, i'm saying everywhere this this is a problem that we have whenever there's negativity we have to react to that yet we never react to positivity we never react to spiritual teachings and i'm not saying you have to react to my content but anybody like anyone who spreads positivity why aren't they given more attention it all goes back to attention and focus if your attention and focus is towards spiritual teachings that's what you will look for and that's what you will share but if you're looking for negativity then that is what you're going to share now let me go deeper into this whole hindu phobia and i know people who were once all about the spiritual teachings now they've gone into that space of let me talk about hindu phobia let me engage in that uh, you know and what happens is especially on twitter is well known for being alt right and what happens is no matter how much you try to avoid it you go into that mindset and it's very hard to come out of it so as much as i think it's okay for people to have those views it's fine you can be on any political spectrum that's absolutely fine but you need to be open enough to understand that you don't have to react to every, everyone or you don't have to consider someone less if they're not talking about it i choose not to talk about it because for me it's less important to be culturally hindu than it is to be spiritually hindu spiritually dharmic that's more important for me so that's my perspective on things and that's where i stand now like i said there's friends of mine that have reached out they say can you speak about these things can you speak about these matters and i've had to humbly decline that's not where my attention is i'm talking about the bhagavad gita i'm talking about us- utilizing the right discernment and i'm literally practicing it you see this is a difference if you've only theoretically known about hinduism you will bypass the spiritual teachings and you'll be like you know what look shivji had to trishul look shri krishna fought in the uh, in the mahabharat people go on to those things but they don't look at the whole vast teachings that says you know what there's oneness here there's love here there's compassion here there's forgiveness here there's acceptance here nobody looks at that they ignore the vast majority and they just look at that minor incident i'm not saying do not defend your religion or do not defend your beliefs do so but think about it another person i've heard where they say you know there's people in these university institutions college institutions are speaking against hinduism one second there's many people that are speaking positively are you are you talking about them are you talking about those that are researching into hinduism and its philosophy are you talking about them are you emphasizing them are you uh, promoting them no because they're not saying anything bad so they're not saying anything reactionary they're not saying anything that excites your brain even though that should be the thing that excites you so that's my difference and i also had a personal experience so and it's ironic actually recently i attended a retreat with swami sarvabriyananda ji in atlanta and in that retreat there was people from uh, the coalition of hindus uh, i think kona something like that and they were basically trying to recruit and as they were going into things um the person made a comment that oh you're a marxist you're you're liberal you're left wing as if it was an insult and i was like no i'm just liberally minded based on the dharmic values and she was like well you know look what happened in lester look what muslims are doing this is bad 
And I was like, stop there for a second, because you're now going into political things instead of the spiritual. And what's funny is, Swamiji is talking about oneness, and this is what these people were doing. So you got to see a dichotomy there, and you got to see a cognitive dissonance. And the person next to me was actually, and this person who was from Kona or whatever, how you pronounce it, they were, they mentioned Kashmiri pundits. And you know what's, or the Kashmir files. And you know what was interesting? The person sitting next to me was from Kashmir, his heritage. And he turned around and said, can you stop speaking hatred here? I'm not here to speak hatred about Muslims. This is not what we're here for. We're here to spread love, positivity and unity. And you know, that's what happens when you actually experience the spiritual teachings. Then you're not culturally there. You're, you're, you're much more deeper. On a deeper level, you feel that spirituality. And you feel that the spiritual teachings have a living reality. They do work. And so that love is what works. That oneness is what works. That unity is what works. That familyhood is what works. Yes, I'm not turning around and saying that there's no hatred from any other place. They may have hatred. But that doesn't mean that you have to respond with hatred. You have the choice to respond with dharmic values. Not with their values. Or that you claim that because if they raise their uh, weapons, we need to raise ours. What nonsense is that? In my opinion, what's my view on Hindu phobia? I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm saying it does exist. But every form of phobia exists. And there's people being attacked for their religious or non-religious beliefs. I condone every form of violence and every form of act that creates instability and creates disturbance so i'm against all of those things but that doesn't mean that one's response has to be the same one can choose to respond differently and just if you want to use the the examples of shivji or shri krishna but if you look into their stories before they even get angry they are extremely calm composed stable-minded, even-minded, peaceful-minded before they even take a step towards action or even before they always look to reconcile matters before it going deeper. My response is always to do interfaith and keep an open mind. Be independently minded. Do not form into any factional thinking, any sectarian thinking be free-minded and always go from a base of love and compassion and oneness because that's the ultimate teaching of Vedanta and the ultimate teaching of the Vedas and if anyone goes against that in my opinion has to take a deep look at within to see are they have they actually experienced the truth of Dharma or are they just culturally just saying I'm a Hindu as a label and that's with any religion, by the way. So I condone anything that is harming others. But the resolution has to always be done with peace, with oneness, with love and familyhood in mind. And it, only when we experience this truth can we then understand it. And, you know, be a Swami Vivekananda. Use your mind, use platforms to promote the message of Hinduism, promote the message of your philosophy, and that's the best way. And nobody can fight against that. And like I said, we may have different beliefs, we may come to it at different ways, but one thing I will emphasize is do it through love, do it through compassion. And you will understand that experientially, truth matters more. And if you're an enlightened being, which is where I want to be, I have to look at the sages. They are my heroes. Not some political figure, not some nationalistic figure, not someone who had political motives. I'm going to go for those that have spiritual motives. And if you want to tackle any form of phobia, 
within yourself or that you see in others go towards the higher truth and the higher truth has been established in the Upanishads it's established in the Bhagavad Gita it's established in all texts and one thing I will say is go towards those content creators who are talking about Dharma only there's one person called Nishji Nish the Fish is his uh, YouTube and I'll put a link to his YouTube channel he's the one person that I have found that has been consistent in spreading the message of Dharma and he's young he's a great content creator uh, I call him my guru brother because even though we come from different sampradayas I deeply respect him because despite what happens around TikTok or Twitter or any of those spaces he remains true to spreading the philosophy the truth that for me is a true Dharmic person and they are worth spreading their message and so sometimes and I, it happens where when you're in that you know TikTok space or Twitter space social media space sometimes it's very easy to get reactionary it's happened to me before but when you think from a different level then you understand that you don't have to react to such things that there's a better message that you can be giving out and that is the philosophy and one thing I will say is even I haven't been consistent in this but Nishji has been deeply consistent and I praise him for that like I said my approach on my channel is to only spread the spiritual messages and this is the only time I'm going to speak about Hindu phobia uh, but yes anything that harms anyone's religion anyone's beliefs that causes others to be violent I strongly am against such things uh, and one thing I will mention I know that there is a legislation about the caste system let me just mention this I am for any legislation that removes the caste system because it's outdated and it's wrong and we should look for the positive spin rather than perpetuating the negative spin and it's not and I'm not saying this just based on me but if you look at the teachings of Adi Shankaraji if you look at the teachings of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, if you look at the messages of Kabir Ji and any other social reformer, we've looked at Sri Narayana Guru Ji, my own uh, guru also talks about removing any caste discrimination. Such people are our examples, such people are worth celebrating and such people are the ones that we follow and that's what I follow. So. At the end of the day, that's all you're going to get from me and uh, the maximum you're going to get from me. So uh, that's my answer to this. And um, if you have any follow-up questions, if you want to know deeper into why, contact me and uh, I'm more than happy to answer those questions. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for joining. And do spread this video with others and or this podcast with others so they can understand, hopefully, uh, that what I share as a content creator is spirituality only, not politics, and definitely not geopolitics. I condemn anyone that does any of those things that will cause hatred against any community. So that's honestly my stance on things, and I'm trying to improve myself, and I'm on a journey of self-improvement. I'm not perfect, I don't have a perfect past, and I want to improve on that. So... Um, that's what I have to say. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for joining. Keep supporting the Bearded Mystic Podcast. Support me on Patreon. Please do. It helps the podcast keep running and helps me keep churning out podcasts. Thank you very much for listening. Take care. Bye.